When Washington gets serious about national defense again, it must send the destructive Jones Act to the bottom of the sea. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. The Jones Act, enacted back in 1920, is a terrible law. Its ostensible purpose was to protect and promote the U.S. shipping industry. It mandates that cargo transported between two American ports must be carried on ships that are American-made, American-owned, and American-staffed. But the Jones Act has ended up hurting our national security by harming American shipbuilding, distorting shipping patterns all across North America, making us more dependent on imported energy, damaging our ports and waterways, and inflicting unnecessary pain on victims of natural disasters. The act has eviscerated our maritime industry. Constructing tankers and container ships in the U.S. now costs almost five times as much as it does for similar vessels in yards in Japan, Norway, and North Korea. Our fleet here is aging, making it less safe. Its size is sinking, so to speak, from 250 ships to 90 today. Our shipyards are going underwater as well, down 67% in number in recent years. Our technology, to use a land-based metaphor, is horse and buggy. As ships become more specialized and technologically advanced, we're falling further behind. A booming sector, for example, is shipping liquefied natural gas, LNG. The vessels here are highly sophisticated. Pathetically, there's not a single U.S.-made LNG vessel. The Jones Act has warped shipping arrangements because moving freights on a Jones ship is so much more costly because of those artificially high construction costs. Residents of the non-contiguous states of Hawaii and Alaska and U.S. island territories, primarily Puerto Rico and Guam, have to pay unnecessarily high costs for products. In Hawaii, for example, that comes to more than $1,800 for a typical family. Or take energy. In a normal world, it would make sense to ship, say, natural gas from Texas to New England. The Jones Act blocks that. So New England imports energy from foreign sources and Texas exports to foreign countries. Moving oil and gas and toxic materials is more safely done by ship than by rail or truck. Yet the Jones Act forces shippers to coastal destinations to use truck and rail on roads parallel to the sea inviting horrific accidents, not to mention costing more. Thanks to this misbegotten piece of legislation, the U.S. suffers from a dearth of top-notch dredging vessels, thereby hurting ports and rivers by making dredging more expensive and time-consuming. Shockingly, the law also immorally inflicts unnecessary pain and perhaps even death from natural calamities. Almost a year ago, Puerto Rico was devastated by a hurricane. Yet the beleaguered island couldn't get desperately needed fuel even though a super tanker was sitting offshore. Why? Because the ship was foreign and thereby forbidden to unload its fuel cargo that it picked up in Texas. After a public outcry, the Biden White House finally granted an emergency waiver. All this is why the Jones Act must go to Davy Jones' locker. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.